Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in for a My Hero Academia uh, brain fart there. Uh, no, a My Hero Academia spoiler video. Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while since we've done this, uh, but we're here. We are uh, because we got we got it really early, and it's not coming out during the live stream, so we can talk about it here. Uh, anyone that wants to ask me what I think can ask me on the live stream as usual in further detail. Anyway, the chapter is pretty cool. I think um, some things that I was thinking ended up being correct, so I'm happy that at least you know. At least some parts of my logic are correct, uh, but let's just get into it. Uh, what we'll do is I'll tell you the summary. I won't show any pictures though because that's illegal. That could get me in like a lot of trouble, so we won't do that. Anyway, uh, here are the summaries. Chapter title is "Even Though." Um, so this is actually really important because it talks like the author has pretty much decided the most important thing here is back goes uh, determination in spite of everything. The chapter starts with uh, Tomora, all for one, oh, let's just call him Shigaraki, because Shigaraki is all for one's last name. Shigaraki stomping on Bakugo's head, saying that Izuku should be there, and that because of that, it shouldn't take long for him to arrive. Uh, okay, therefore, he plans to turn Bakugo into a hideous corpse. If Izuku was already so enraged when his friend was pierced in the previous war, how would he react if he were killed this time? Bakugo activates his panzer once again and tries to shoot, but Shigaraki throws him up with his foot and holds the boy by the neck. He then says that no matter how much time passes, Bakugo will always be just a small piece of shit compared to one for all. Okay, so we do have all the spoiler images as well. And for that sequence, it's actually pretty good choreography, I think, because uh, Horikoshi really made it kind of excruciating, really made the whole scene look really pathetic. So the way it went is just more like Bakugo was being kept on the ground by Shigaraki's foot. Shigaraki lifts Bakugo up by the hair. It looked really good. Bakugo was also trying to fire stuff at Shigaraki. Shigaraki uses his feet to like one by one destroy Bakugo's gear and ultimately um, that whole sequence when you see it in the actual chapter legitimately looks very very good. I think the author did a really great job here when it came to just you know depicting weakness. Um, it really makes things feel a little bit more visceral here. Um, I think especially in a situation where he might not be killing off a lot of characters, taking the time to do th that extra little bit of effort and showing in really good detail the amount of damage someone is taking and the, like showing futility and weakness, that, that's really something that you can do with images. Um, and I think this week he's really done a good job of showing weakness here. It's a lot more visceral of a feeling that you're getting. Anyway, continuing with the summary. At that moment is when Nejire arrives with a new attack, um, her energy pike, she pretty much makes a lance out of her vitality. All for one holds Bakugo as a hostage, forcing her to redirect the blow to dodge him. So that looked really good as well, uh, pretty much holding Bakugo's body as the energy is coming in and she redirects it. It was actually cool to see that she had that much control after launching it. It's at this point that Shigaraki feels his back being stabbed and we see that Sun Eater was camouflaged nearby. Sun Eater has two huge scorpion tails and is using them together with the octopus's properties. Uh, Shigaraki notices that the attack is imbued with poison, but soon grows a finger mouth that removes the toxin. More strange fingers begin to grow on a large scale, and he says that his body will always adapt to the situation. Okay, so the summary does le leave out a few more things from the pictures. Um, before Nejida shows up, like Bakugo looked like he was being overwhelmed by the fingers. It's actually a really grotesque shot, but it's really good um, for the art. Um, now, when it comes to the whole stuff with Nejire and Tamaki there, I thought Tamaki's situ I think this is like one of the parts I was most happy about because if you watched my chapter review, you would have seen that I mentioned that Tamaki, like, he really can't do anything because even if he does poison, Shigaraki's body is going to evolve past it. And that's exactly what we got. So I like that because it says, okay, the author is being relatively logical here. And like, all right, I, I, we understand the uh, biology of how this thing works. Now, in terms of the finger, or like not the finger mouth, but pretty much Shigaraki grew a mouth off the side of his arm and he just expelled all the poison that way. Really interesting. That's a really interesting way of doing it. He could have also sweat the poison out. There were many ways you could have done this. Um, now, the reason I bring that one up is because what he ultimately ended up doing was a very um, rudimentary way of getting the poison. What's really impressive is that his body was able to collect the poison in one location and spit it out. Uh, but like another way to deal with poison would have just been to have his body create antitoxins immediately and just, you know, neutralize the poison. Um, the reason that that is relatively important is because if his body isn't actually creating antitoxins, but it is instead doing something very mechanical, that being creating a mouth to just eject the poison out, 
it actually says that his body actually isn't capable of super evolving. It, it It's not able to create super, super uh, specialized solutions, at least at this stage. I would have really thought it would have just been like his body creates an antidote itself. But what you actually end up getting here is just a forceful ejection. Um, a lot more rudimentary than you really could have expected. So that was a cool detail. But ultimately, the idea of his body will always evolve. You know, I pointed that out. I like that we are getting something consistent there. Another thing that I... Well, actually, before I go to my next point, uh, let's continue the summary. Uh, Meteor then appears and rescues Bakugo from the finger hell, throwing him back to Genus. Uh, you see, like, a nice cable coming in to grab Bakugo as uh, Meteor throws him up. Uh, Shigaraki remembers his face from the last war, and he introduces himself as, Lam as Lamillion, the messenger bodyguard. So this is just confirming that uh, Meteor was the messenger bodyguard they talked about in the previous chapter. He asks why Shigaraki wants so badly to destroy everything, and he replies that it's because the whole structure of society is flawed. Um, this is actually kind of critical, because this sounds like this is Shigaraki talking and not all for one. Meanwhile, Nejire shoots a small wave that is absorbed by Meteor's right arm. Uh, I don't think absorb is the right word here, but pretty much it wraps around Meteor's right arm. I was really happy about this because in my previous video, I mentioned that Nejire is the only one that actually can do anything against Shigaraki because she's the only one that has a non-physical power here. Um, and we do end up kind of seeing that. It's like she's being useful here. He says that this explanation is due to the fact that Tamora All for One has never had any friends, which I think is a great line, because otherwise he would know that some things can't be destroyed. Okay, the rationale there, I'm hoping for something better in the final chapter, uh, but I, I like just pointing out Shigaraki doesn't have any friends. Um, All for One doesn't have any friends. Uh, th one important thing here, though, is to remember, Shigaraki specifically makes exclusions if it's something that his friends want. So if like Toga wants something to stay, Shigaraki has already said that he would keep that thing around. So Shigaraki already is kind of compliant with this idea about friends and like stuff can't be destroyed. Anyway, Mirio hits Shigaraki with a wave punch while acknowledging to himself that they have no way to do anything uh, significant until Izuku arrives. Then we cut to uh, Best Genus and we see him asking Bakugo to show him his right arm so he can make a suture with his wires. Bakugo doesn't respond. He's just pressing very hard against the grass. He's just holding on to grass. Um, Best Genus says that the boy is feeling devastated after being defeated by Shigaraki so easily and says there's no point comparing the two of them because that monster is another level of existence. But before he can finish his speech, he hears Bakugo saying, Finger, right, faint. Um, so what's happening is that Bakugo is watching the battlefield. Uh, he's analyzing the situation as if he were there, even though he's been knocked down. And there's the even though. And crushed, Dynamite's spirit remains firm and strong. The summary misses a, a very critical detail. On the final page of the chapter, you see Bakugo's face. And then you see around his face, like he has tears rolling from his eyes as he's staring. But you see the explosion effects of his super explosions, like little star effects. They're going off around his face. So what that seems to me to indicate... Uh, we also got like a few lines translated for the chapter. Uh, they were best genus here. Let me just like read those lines because those lines might indicate what's going on here. And like you should be able to figure out what's going on here if you've been reading here academia. But best genus when he's talking to Baku has said there is no immediate room for the experience of being close to death. It's all right now. Well, okay, whatever. The most incredible, uh, the most critical line here is being close to death. We know that quirk evolution happens in really desperate situations. So what I think is going on in the final page is that the rest of Bakugo's body has finally decided like, hey, every single bead of sweat we're going to produce is going to explode. Because that's the only thing that justifies many explosions going off around Bakugo's face. And given that he's the, like his spirit is still in the fight, given that after getting brutalized by Bakugo, he's still staring at that fight, you're likely going to see Bakugo going in there, exploding on all cylinders, uh, which by itself is a pretty cool idea. He will, he really will become an explosion god. Um, now let's see, any other little details from the uh, spoiler pages? I mean, like, I think it's all pretty cool. Like, Meteor gets some really good shots here. Meteor, we all knew that Meteor was going to be able to approach Shigaraki, so it's actually cool to see him approaching Shigaraki. And... The fact that they're using Nejire's power to do some damage to Shigaraki, that's actually the most critical thing because that's the only way they're going to do it because Nejire is only one with a unique power here or like a power that's undefined um, in terms of like the energy type. Overall, you know, I think we got a very reasonable chapter and I think so far with Bakugo's upgrade, I think it's solid. 
I want to see what next chapter is going to do. In terms of the team play between the big three, this is kind of what you wanted. Um, and in terms of like, you know, Sun Eater being neutralized, in, term, in terms of Mirio not being the best, in terms of Nejude being like one of the critical players here, this is all consistent and this all makes sense. Um, like, thank God that Horikoshi thought to have Sun Eater use poison, and thank God he realized the logical conclusion of someone whose body is evolving. Again, most critical thing there is the mechanism of evolution, because that, mechani that mechanism of evolution implies that this, that his body actually isn't able to do miracles just yet. And I know, like, we're, we're talking about a guy that's producing massive growths, uh, but no, this is actually a really big deal. There, there is a way to beat him here, hopefully. Anyway, everyone. Uh, that's going to be it for me. Just a very short spoiler video. Let me know what you thought down below. And until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.